Okay, so this has been the night of several different problems. Um, apparently this game is gamepad um, capable, and if you have a joystick or a throttle like I have and I haven't used for a while, and they're sitting behind your desk, and one of the keys on the either joystick or throttle, I couldn't figure out which one it was, is pushed, it will just cause this menu to do an insane uh, scrolling thing. So I had to unplug both of those. But while doing that, apparently I, I hit my camera and had to restart OBS because it does not like to play well when you unplug the, or just temporarily unplug the webcam. So let's try this again. Uh, <laughs> okay, so. This is Serolim 3. It just came out today. Um, as I mentioned before, I guess, no, I didn't really because that recording isn't going to go up. Um, I've had Serolim on my backlog for a long time. Um, just because of my, my lifestyle, I'm a father of two very young children. Um, mobile gaming tends to be my preferred way to play games. Um, just because pretty much every game you can just hit the power button and get up immediately if you need to and anyone with small kids knows that it's very interrupt driven driven so anyway the the two serial M games that were on my backlog were on my mobile device and um, yeah they're have been there for quite a while anyway so the third one just came out today and I'm I've I poked around and asked a question on Reddit, actually, if I, you know, should have played the previous ones before starting this, and people were assuring me I didn't need to. So, as far as I understand it, this is, you know, similar to any of the, I guess maybe not Pokemon, but in the sense that you can play um, a later game with never having played one of the earlier ones. Um, anyway, so the, the new one that just came out apparently is very streamlined compared to the other uh, Serial M games. And, um, yeah, I mean, it, it just, you know, it's, it's looked really cool for me for a long time. So, um, anyway, I figured now would be a good time to play it. Um, yeah, as, as the subject line says, this is a blind playthrough with me never having played any of the Serum games. But I've heard it's a really fun game. It's, it's, it's not a rogue-like, but it's sort of a rogue-inspired game where you have, you know discrete movements um it's also got a whole monster i believe capturing and um breeding aspect is another major thing so that's i guess where my comparison to pokemon came up um i'd hesitate to do that though because i don't from the little that i do know about this game i'm not gonna assume that it's <laughs> it's anything like Pokemon more than just the fact that it has monsters that you can catch. So, um, without any more delay, here we go. Huh. He seems angry. My name is... Horon, the god of anger, says, That was a rhetorical question, you dense... Uh, swear word. Okay, but seriously, are you supposed to be a male or a female? The fact that I even need to ask just goes to show how... <laughs> how unbelievably ugly I am. Uh, I am a... I'm a male. Ha, really? That sure is... Heck. <laughs> was it gonna be my first guess? Whatever. So then, what's your class of choice? No, wait, don't tell me. Let me guess. You're one of those edgy death weirdos, aren't you? Give me a freaking break. Trying to keep this, you know, kid-friendly. Or at least, could be played around kids. Uh, let's see. Chaos. Um... Chaos Magi empower their characters' attacks to deal additional damage. They're especially proficient at turning the tide of battle when all hope seems lost. Chaos Magi are, start their quests with an autumn. 
a spiteful creature who draws pleasure from afflicting others with insurmountable pain. And there's death. Death magi summon powerful creatures from the land of the dead and to serve their needs. They boast powerful magic that enfeebles their enemies, allowing their creatures to pick off foes one by one. Death magi start their quest with Mumu, a disturbing and ominous creature known for spreading deadly plagues throughout the lands of Rhodia. Life magi grant their characters nearly unlimited longevity. They utilize enhanced healing techniques and powerful wards, ensuring that their creatures are able to withstand anything that comes their way. Life magi start their quest with Emli, a holy creature who can empower itself with blessings to overwhelm its foes. Uh, nature magi are as resourceful as they are strategic. They enable their creatures to dodge and counter incoming attacks. <laughs> also employing insurmountable tactics both in and out of battle. Major Magi start their quest with Ugat, a cunning creature capable of turning its most profound weakness into its greatest strengths. And finally, Sorcery. Sorcery Magi are the masters of the arcane. They grant their creatures power beyond imagination by allowing them to cast amplified versions of any spell in existence. Sorcery Magi start their quest with Aja Berku, a mysterious creature that excels at spellcasting. It looks a cube with an eyeball? Alright. Uh, I don't know anything, so I will... I don't know, maybe casting every single spell imaginable is a little overwhelming. Um, turning weakness into strength sounds tricky. Um, blessing itself to gain power sounds pretty straightforward. Uh, this one sort of seems necromancy-ish. Um, and, yeah, might as well, yep, okay, I'll, I'll just stick the chaos thing, just like Big Head said I should do. Yep. <laughs> you know, I just realized something, I don't give a heck what your class is. You can shove it up your, Sarathi Goddess of Light says, what are you doing, Tauron, other than wasting precious time, of course. Brig Briz, you must awaken from this dream immediately. Next is under attack by the army of Cyrilim. Many of your people have already fallen. You must do something. Oh, oh I'm going to be that guy. I'm going to save everyone. That that seems seems fun. Turon God of Anger. Oh, yeah, I forgot to mention that. Whatever fudge it. Not like this scrawny little cow is strong enough to stop what, that power-hungry son of a gun. Anyway, your kingdom is doomed. Sorry, not sorry. He sounds very bitter. Sorry, <laughs> the goddess of light says... Enough, Toron. You must be. You must hurry, Brickbriz. Though you are barely 16 years of age, you are your kingdom's last hope to repel Cyrilim's army. I. I'm not a big fan of being a kid in these games. Like, no offense to Pokemon and most of these these games, but uh, yeah, I, we 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 grew up with these games, but I feel like their main audience are adults now. Maybe it'd be nice to have an adult game. But I guess this will stream better. Ow! <laughs> okay, good. So, at least someone here is aware that I am actually fairly close to 34 years old. What? You're kidding me, right? He's like 34 years old. Check out that dirty mustache. Yeah. Sarath, the goddess of lights, says his age matters not. Come now, Brig Briz. You must prepare to defend Nex. Oh, here we go. This looks important. All right, let's get down to business. There's no need to waste uh, messing with the proverbial dog. You need kill the invaders and repel the attack. But alas, you are a weak piece of something. That's why you'll need a creature to do the dirty deed in your stead. Sarathi, goddess of light, says, Turan, take crass. Or, Turan, though crass is correct, take this autumn core and some resources. You can use these items to summon an autumn to fight for you. You have an autumn core, a thousand brimstone, and a thousand crystal. Summon a creature, approach the summoning brazier using the WSAD arrow keys. Press E to open the summoning menu. Select the creature you wish to summon, then confirm your choice to receive your first creature. Alright, let's do this. <laughs> you approach the summoning brazier, but shrug your shoulders in confusion. You have absolutely no idea how to summon a creature. Sure, you know which controls to press, but how does it all actually work? 
What's the science behind it? Oh, <laughs> for heck's sake. Don't tell me. You can't even figure out how to summon a creature. It's simple. Toss the core and resources into the flames, then dance around the creature counterclockwise six times while meowing like a cat in heat. I know it sounds weird, but trust me, it works. Though it sounds like an embarrassing process, you comply with Toron's instructions. <laughs> you toss the core and resources into the brazier and watch as they're engulfed in flames. Then you begin <laughs> dancing to the best of your ability while <laughs> scream meowing enthusiastically. <laughs> yes. Disbelieving. <laughs> You're even dumber than you look. Did you really think that would work? It's too bad you wasted that core. It was a rare one. <laughs> Oh, for goodness sake, Toron, this is no time for games. Here, Bribrius, have a spare core. <laughs> Try again. To summon a creature, you need only hold the core out in front of you, a few paces away from the brazier. The en enchanted flames will take care of the rest. Hurry. All right. Yep, yep, yep. yep. again. Got my autumn core. A thousand more brimstone, a thousand crystals. Sweet. Uh... I don't have any creatures in my party. Alright, uh... Yep, alright. Hey, Warren, are you deaf? Get back and summon a creature for heck's sake. Alright, uh... Yeah, okay. Uh... I do want to summon a creature. Let's oh, spawn Odom. Yes, summon this creature. Oh! It's a weird red critter. Excellent! You can use this creature to fight against Cyrilim. Sarathi, goddess of light. Quickly now, my sister. Eurybis is fighting off some enemies just south of here. Find her and lend her your aid. Yep, 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 yep. Oh, I got a critter. This castle belongs to the king of Cyrilim. Die. A hostile abomination brute appeared. I guess I will just attack. The enemy abomination brute unscathed is a level 1 death creature. It has no buffs or debuffs. Uh, I guess we'll attack it again. Yeah, oh, yep, 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 yep. Oh, I won. I won my very first fight. Signs are looking good. Ah, experience. And a bunch of resources? Good work, Brick Briz. I'll hold down this area. You should meet up with Zont and Ilbird in the library to see if they need any help. All right, all right, all right, all right. Go to the library. Right. I'm guessing it's the one with the books. Army of Cyrilim has already annihilated all the other kingdoms in Rhodia. Only next remains. We must stop at nothing to defend it. Before continuing on, you should equip your creature with an artifact to make it more powerful. Take this sword and equip it to your new creature. It will help you in the battles ahead. Tutorial artifacts. You can equip each of your creatures with one artifact. Artifacts are powerful items that grant your creatures beneficial effects as long as they're equipped. Some artifacts offer stat boosts, while others can offer your creatures powerful on-hit effects. New traits, new spells, and much more. You'll find plenty of artifacts during your travels, but you'll be able to craft and enchant your own artifacts later on as well. You should equip your autumn with the sword you just received. Press Q to open the menu, then choose creatures and select your autumn, then equip it. Yep, yep, pretty straightforward. Yep, got a sword. Attack plus 30. Alright. Creatures. Uh, equip. Sword. Oh, yeah, there we go. Alright. Excellent, your autumn is much more powerful now thanks to the attack boost from its artifact. Continue into the library and give Zont, Zont any assistance you can offer. Oh. I'm not sure which one is Zont, but... Cinder Devil, the enemy creature, is currently fighting Ilward. The creature is currently fighting Desiria. She's losing because she's a human and she's old. I'm guessing this one? I think Zont. Alright, uh... Let's defend this library together, Brady Brig Briz. I'll take this one, you take the other. Uh, we shall take what is rightfully ours. Next belongs to us. 
A hostile bard jongler appeared. Oh. Yes, I won my second fight. I'm unstoppable. Excellent work, Brickbridge. We've secured the library. The King Cyrilum was once a powerful, fair, and just ruler. I cannot understand what's befallen him to make him act with such recklessness. All right. I'm guessing that'll be answered here very soon. But that question must be answered another time. For now, we must secure Nex at all costs. Quickly now, come here. I have a gift for you. Oh, another gift. Uh, going, 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 going. Take this spell gem and equip it to your autumn. It will allow the creature to cast a powerful spell. All right, another tutorial. Here we go. Creatures can equip spell gems in order to cast the spells contained within. By default, each creature can equip up to three spell gems at a time, but this limit can be increased later on. Some spell gems contain randomized properties that change the way a spell behaves in battle. For example, you might find a gem of fireball that contains the increased damage property, which increases the damage dealt by that spell. Later on, you'll be able to modify your spell's gems properties to suit your needs. Oh, and don't forget, spells cost mana to use. Um, if you run out of mana, you can't cast spells. Equip them the same way you did, but manage spell gems instead of equip. All right. Uh, creatures. Manage spell gems. Empty slot. Gem of Chaos Bolt. 12 mana target. Takes a moderate amount of damage and uh, that ignores 50% of its defense. Cool. Okay. Masterful. Your autumn is ready to cast powerful spell in the next battle. The entire castle is now secure, except for the stables. Tartareth is fighting off some enemies there, but he's not exactly the most dependable god in Rhodia. See if you can help out. Ilbert has already made his way over there. Oh, and make sure you check with Polio, <laughs> the stableman, while you're there. As I'm sure you know, he's a bit of a wimp. What the heck? His name is Polio. What kind of messed up parents named their kid Polio? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yuck, 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 yuck. Well, that's nice. The stables are right next to here. Just like the last time, King Burbriz. Crush our enemies where they stand. I can handle myself he here. See if Tartareth could use your help. Which one's that? Kill everything. Alright, uh, I'm gonna maybe get the... Yeah, might as well try to use my fancy spell. That, that didn't seem nearly as good as my three attacks. Yeah, well, I'm just going to do that. Seems to be a good strategy. Oh my gosh, three battles in a row and I leveled up. I am I'm getting way, way too good at this game. <laughs> Alright. Good, killed them all. Congratulations, both you and your creature gained enough experience from points from battle and they are leveled up. When your creatures level up, they gain a permanent boost to their health, attack, intelligence, defense, and speed. In other words, all their stats increase except for their mana. This makes them more powerful in bat battle. When you level up, you'll gain some deity points. Deity points can be spent on perks, which grant you all kinds of bonuses that are unique to the class you chose at the start of the game. Spend your deity points, press Q, open the menu, then select character and select perks. Uh, perks. Um, yeah, why don't we... More brimstone. I, I have no idea what any of these things are, so... I'm just gonna go with the one that, that seems... Good. Speed is, speed is good. Power, power is also good. Uh, attack and attack damage. I wish I knew what the difference between attack and power was. Uh, let's do attack damage, because that's the only... Okay, yep, sure. Attack damage. Sounds good. You're the weak one, I'm guessing? <laughs> Holy go. It's... It's silly. Mutated Vampire Bat.
Quickly, Brit Briz, the final battle's upon us. This creature is the only known only remaining survivor from the stables. Talk it into joining you and use it to defeat the king Cyrilon's lieutenants. Hebron and Damios. Uh <laughs> Unbelievable, absolutely unbelievable. What kind of moronic kingdom is this? Mutated, ba mutated vampire bat, mutated vampire bat, mutated vampire bat? Oh, it joined my party, that's convenient. Uh, ahem, well, yes. Desperate times call for desperate measures. You'll have to settle with what life throws at you. Now then, let's drive these invaders from your kingdom once and for all. Before I leave you to it, I will grant you some of my power. This enchantment will allow you to run as fast as the wind. Ah. Good luck, Brig Riz. Oh, look how fast I go. Uh. This is overwhelming. Who am I doing what? Who? Oh, I'm guessing it's those two dudes up here. You are the king of next pathetic surrender, and I will give you my word that we will spare your people. You, however, will be taking uh, will be taking your head back to Serlin. Like heck, we'll surrender. <laughs> I hate everyone and everything, but you losers have safely secured yourselves at the top of my angry list. Get somethinged. Do not falter, Brick Briz. I will lend you my aid against these betrayers. So that's how it's going to be, is it? Well then, by order of the King of Serlem, I hereby sentence you all to death. Uh... I have significantly more health than I did before. Alright, um... Do I have any... No, don't think I... Didn't think I did. Uh, why don't we... Yep, yeah, just... It just seems like cheating. I'm guessing this is all just a tutorial, though. Yeah, this is, um... Yep, yep, still attacking. Holy heck, what the heck are you morons doing? Swatting flies? Let's finish this once and for all. Be gone, foul losers. Yep, yep, thank you. That that was just kind of... Oh, we only gained 25 experience for that epic battle. Alright. Ha, sup! Losers. <laughs> Too easy to get the heck out of here. Way to ruin the moment, Toron. Big Briz. There is little time to relish in today's victory. The King of Cyrilim is still at large. But we have a lot of work to do before we can launch a counterattack on his kingdom. Yeah, for example, you need to stop being such a weak loser. Enslave some creatures against their will and make them fight for you. That's how we'll win this. I agree with Turan. <laughs> We're in no state to attack Cyrilim right now. Many of our people and creatures died in today's attack. And though it pains me to admit it, you still have much to learn about the art of war before we can hope to defeat such a formidable enemy. But that is a discussion for another time. For now, let's worry about cleaning up the mess those heathens left in our castle. When all is settled, we can devise a plan of attack. You and Edward have spent the last several days restoring what is left of your kingdom, Nex. Kingdom Nex. Uh, while you managed to recruit a few new citizens to help take care of the castle, you found it difficult to convince anyone to live in a kingdom that is at war with Cyrilim. Finally, the day has come for you to take the fight to Cyrilim. Sarathi, got it. Sarathi? Sarathwi, goddess of light, and Turon, god of anger, have come back to Nex to help formulate a strategy. Hello again, Brigbriz. I trust you've had. No trouble rebuilding next to its former glory. 
Who the heck are you kidding, lady? The whole castle got wiped out just a few days ago. Are you expecting a miracle? Not to mention most of Rhodia's human population has been annihilated, and now every realm across the land is being overtaken by these fat slobs. I was getting that, Toron. Calm yourself. Big Biz, as Toron was saying, we have a bit of a problem. The King of Cyrilem has dispatched his most trusted courts to try to take over each of the 15 realms of Rhodia. Yeah, you didn't think we came all this way just to help your crummy kingdom, did you? As you know, each realm is ruled by one of the gods. However, Cyrilem has overtaken these realms, thereby limiting the power that each god has over its realm. And worse yet, a weakened god can be manipulated through to the usurper's will. So it seems that we have a number of problems on our hands. We have no choice but to delay our attack on Cyrilem and first set our focus on these immediate threats. After all, we'll never be able to destroy Cyrilem without the god's aid. First, we should seek out and destroy these would-be tyrants in each of the 15 realms of Rhodia. I trust that we can rely on the support of the gods for this. Do I have the right of it, Sarathi? Yes, of course. We'll help you in any way we can. I'll help, but only in my realm, the cutthroat jungle. The rest of the gods can go shove themselves. Oh, and since my realm is the most important, we'll be going there first. Sure thing, Toron. Anyway... Back to what I was saying earlier, while we're defending each of the realms, we need to keep an eye out for anyone who can aid us in the imminent war against Cyrilim. Our numbers are low, and an extra pair of hands we can recruit will be a great boon to us all. You know what, for a little who, you have some pretty good ideas. You should look for all kinds of people, like a blacksmith, an enchanter, a breeding master, a stableman's assistant, some gambling dwarves. You're spoiling everything, Toron, enough. Ahem, if I may finish my thought. After we've defended the realms and gathered an army, we can unite our forces with that of the gods and defeat Cyrilem once and for all. Does anyone object to this plan? Dead silence. It's settled then, King Brimbris. Gather your thoughts and belongings, then speak with me again. It is time for you to begin what will be a long and tiresome journey. As your hand, I will stay back and defend next from any straggling attacks. You may have a word you you may have you have my word that our people remain safe here. What what the heck? I thought you were going to do all of that stuff, Ilbert. Why are you sending this scrawny little person out to save the world? Of course, Turan, he is the king, and I believe in him. You may not see his potential, but I do. There will be no changing my mind on this matter. Bah, whatever, you humans are merely an accessory to my triumph anyway. Now let's do this stuff. Alright, quests. You just received your first quest. There are three different types of quests in this game. Castle quests, realm quests, and side quests. The quest you received is called a castle quest. These quests advance the main storyline and typically allow you to unlock new game features. We'll explain what realm quests and side quests are later on. For now, you should know that you can view more details about the quests you're currently on or those you've already completed by pressing Q to open the game menu and press quests. Alright, yep. Okay, let's let's go look at the quests. Current quests, yep. Alright, speak with Ilbert. Extract from as many creatures as possible. You never know when you'll need that creature's core later on. It's time you make your way through the cutthroat jungle, King Brigbriz. Turan will guide you through the realm and may even teach you a few new things along the way. On second thought, he probably won't teach you anything because he hates you. In order to restore God's power over a realm, you must do two things. First, you must seek out that God's altar and attune yourself to it. That will allow the God to communicate with you through your thoughts, and therefore, this should be your first goal at the start of every new realm you discover. Second, you must re-establish the god's physical presence in that realm. To do that, you'll need to defeat whatever powerful foe is inhibiting that god's power, and capture its soul in this nether orb. Take it. I got a white nether orb. Lastly, before you leave, you might want to check out the library. It's full of useful information that will help you on your journey. Good luck, King Brickbriz. 
I know you'll do our kingdom proud. Ay, another tutorial. The library is a vital source of information to help you learn more about the game. If you ever have any questions about how a certain part of the game works, you should always check the library for answers. The library also serves as a catalog of information you've acquired in your journey. As you discover new creatures, spells, and other phenomena, the library will magically produce new information for you. You can also view the library at any time by pressing Q to open the menu and then choose the library. The realms are where you'll spend most of your time. They are randomly generated worlds, so each time you enter a realm, it'll be different from the last. There are 15 different types of realms, and each one is ruled by a different god. The first realm you'll visit is called the Cutthroat Jungle, which is ruled by Turan, the god of anger. Each realm comes with its own set of unique features, creatures, and treasures. As you progress through the game, you'll unlock additional creatures and even and events in realms as well. Ugh. Teleportation Shrine is one of Nex's most important relics. It allows you to teleport to the realms. When you use the Teleportation Shrine, you'll be asked to choose a realm depth. The higher the depth you choose, the stronger the enemies will be in that realm, but the treasure will be better as well. Now use the Teleportation Shrine and teleport to your first realm. Ah. So... All right, I think I'm gonna put a little little break in here. I've been playing for what thirty about thirty ish minutes. Um, yeah, so I'll probably put a cut right here because I honestly don't think anyone's gonna want to watch the tutorial. That was was not a lot of uh, fun and a lot of reading. Um, I have my own opinions on video games with a lot of reading up front, but in general, I don't favor them. Okay, so, yep, I will put a cut right here, and then um, we will move on forward. Teleport to a realm. I will start realm one. Yep, 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 sounds good. All right, cutting right here.